Well, here we are, back on the Appalachian Trail. Picking up where we left off last time. <sighs> last time I started at Duncannon, went all the way up Cove Mountain and down to this parking lot. And then I went back and then I camped that way. So now, continuing in the southbound direction, we're gonna be hitting some miles today, hopefully. I don't know how many exactly, but we're gonna be going through Boiling Springs, and it's gonna be mostly farmland, and I don't know what kind of, what kind of camping there's gonna be. I don't think there's gonna be any, so I'm expecting to have to go about 20 miles to get to the, to get to the next opportunity to camp, so. Hopefully the terrain will make that possible because it shouldn't be that challenging. Uh, but we shall see. I'm kind of playing it by ear. Well, it certainly sounds like spring out here. And the air smells fresh. It smells like spring. The temperature's about 35. Can't say it really feels like spring, but you can tell it's right around the corner. This is the end of April right now. And uh, I'm pretty ready for some, some warmer temperatures. How's this for a view? Not bad, right? Yeah, man, so far. I'm liking this section of the Pennsylvania AT. No rocks. That's pretty awesome. So, it looks like before we go up there, we're gonna go all the way down to the bottom. This looks like a major pud, pointless up and down. We're going to get our calorie burn for today. Man, <laughs> I'm just looking at how steep that is. So, not quite there yet, but almost at the top. And uh, it's not that bad. Here comes another, another hiker. The Darlington Shelter is that way. <sighs> I think I'm pretty close to the top now. The signs of spring. Very soon now, the green tunnel will be in full effect. The farmland of America. And that's where we're going down there. At some point. All the way down, all the way out. Probably another 18 miles maybe, 17 miles. So. That's pretty steep, <laughs> uh, but it looks like we're going to be doing a couple of switchbacks. Looks like the trail goes over there, Can you, like right over there, I think. So I came down from the mountain a while ago and uh, I've been sort of following this this trail, which is kind of cool because it uh, follows this nice stream here, and it's relatively flat, and there's little bridges all over the place. And uh, I'm not exactly sure where I am, but uh, it's a really nice section of trail. I really like it. Well, 
so far the trail is like really nice this part of it anyway and uh, I just hiked up this nice little trail along this little stream and the stream turns into a much bigger stream over here check this out pretty nice It's like a roller coaster. All right, well, I just came across this bridge and now I'm making a right turn to stay on the AT. And we have this really cool looking uh, elevated boardwalk. Check it out. Where does this thing go? Looks like we are coming into some serious farmland now. This feels a little weird. I feel like I'm hiking across someone's property. But I see a I see a white blaze right there. We've got cows. Yeah, here we are. Serious farmland now. I'm like way out here. This is normally like, I'd be out here on my bike. It feels really weird to us. Just like walk all the way out here. So, I see the, I see the white blaze over there. And that's, that's where I'm trying to go, right there. Just feels weird being out here. Welcome to Appalachian Trail Lands. Get on the trail. Nice views, huh? I bet you this is a nice break from the green tunnel for anybody who's through hiking. Well, I just crossed over a couple of highways and uh, back in the woods again. Sort of, it's kind of a narrow corridor of woods. More trip hazards. If you trip on these rocks, that's your own dumb fault. If you trip on this little mat that they put out here, don't say they didn't warn you. So tiny. Well, so far, this section beats every other Pennsylvania AT section that I've ever done as far as terrain and variety goes. Onward and upward. Back into farmland again. 
I, uh, I hit a parking lot back there, which normally for me that would be a uh, turnaround point because then I can always just come out next weekend and park my car there and keep on going, but really going for the whole thing this time. There's really no, uh, there's no option to take any shortcuts here. These people are shooting guns on their own property or something. Uh, so, who needs to go to Grayson Highlands when you can just come to Boiling Springs, PA and you can see some big ponies. <laughs> there's another one just over the hill there. So there's actually two horses in here. And I had to climb over the fence to get in here. You gotta watch where you step. So I'm uh, being, I'm being, I'm not really being chased, but I'm, I'm kind of playing leapfrog with these two other dudes who are hiking. I stopped to uh, talk with somebody going in the northbound direction. We had a little chit chat. And meanwhile, these two other dudes came flying up the trail. Got big packs on, lots of gear. They're pretty serious. And I think they're faster than me. But, uh, and because I stopped to talk to somebody, they caught me very easily. And then the one dude stopped to wait for his buddy. And then I got ahead of him. And uh, I haven't seen them in a while, but every once in a while I see them off in the, in the distance and uh, kind of playing leaf rock a little bit. Hey, if anything, they're, at least they're uh, pushing me to hike a little faster. So they got, you know, they have trekking poles. So whenever I've used trekking poles, I think. Uh, I think it makes me hike faster for some reason. It's like you just you get in that rhythm, and if you don't have them, and it's just you're kind of just walking, and you have to consciously make an effort to to have a fast pace. There's something about trekking poles that makes me hike faster. I don't know what it is. I just got to the Appalachian Trail Conservancy. So, you know, of course there's no camping allowed around here, but uh, it kind of means that there's about, maybe about four miles to go to get back into the woods. I'm just gonna rest here for a minute and get back on the trail. Back in farmland again. There's some mountains off in the distance over that way. Maybe I'm going over there, I'm not sure exactly. But uh, man, after hiking 16 miles and getting to that ATC, the Appalachian Trail Conservancy, it was hard to leave, man. But nope, I have no place to sleep tonight, so I have to head off into the woods. Over there, there's a parallel course, but that's a blue trail that, that points to the, uh, something called the Appalachian Trail Campground. I'm not sure what that is, but that's not where I'm going. So, I'm gonna go down here, make a right turn, and then head up into the mountains. One last ass kicker at the end of the day.
you know, these people parked over here. They're all day hikers. Coming in here for fun at four o'clock in the afternoon. Me? Only reason I'm coming in here is I'm looking for a place to sleep tonight. <laughs> I'm looking for a, a nice place to sleep. This is my hotel up here, this mountain. Well, I'm back in the forest again. As soon as I find that water, I'm camping. I, I actually did find a little stream down there, but there's no campsites around there. If I was like super lazy, I could just camp anywhere down there. But I'm not doing that. I want to see where this shelter is. Well, I wasn't really expecting this kind of a climb at the end. But we're up pretty high. I made it to the top. Man, I don't see any I don't see any shelter. I don't know where the shelter is. Oh wait. Center point knob elevation 1060. Yeah, that's pretty high. Yeah, I was expecting to just go into the woods a little bit, find a shelter and camp. I wasn't really expecting any thousand foot climbs at the end of the day. Uh, I've gone about 19 miles, and uh, I really don't feel like going any farther. And, oh look, there's water. Oh look, one of these plaques. That's pretty cool. And there's some water there. Man. I really thought I would get in here somewhere and see a shelter and see some campsites. Man. What the hay. Alright, let me let me check the map and get my get my position straight so I know which way to go. Well apparently the day is not over yet. Um, we do have to go down to the shelter, which is down this way. It's probably another mile this way. For all I know, it's probably down at the bottom of this hill. It is only about 5 o'clock. So, I'm just really exhausted though. <sighs> Man. So this is what I have to look forward to. First thing tomorrow morning is this climb back up. I found this nice little campsite here. Uh, there's no water around, but basically, um, here's the situation. On my way up here, um, I talked to somebody who had just come from the shelter, uh, which I'm trying to reach. And uh, she said it was only like, I don't know, a few minutes away, like nine minutes away or something, I don't know. Uh, but that there's no water up there. That you have to go past the shelter and down an eighth of a mile to get water and then come back up to the shelter. So I'm just like, man, I'm, I've already gone way farther than I wanted to go. And the last thing I feel like doing is another up and down. Um, so what I found is this little campsite right here. And yeah, it's right on the trail, I don't care. Um, only people up here right now are gonna be through hikers. Uh, so I'm just gonna set up my hammock right here. And uh, I'll use what, what water I have for, for dinner and stuff. And then uh, maybe I'll, I'll hike over there without any gear 
just to uh, just to bring back some water. Uh, so that's kind of like the plan. I, did, I didn't really want to uh, camp at the shelter anyway. I, I understand there's a lot of there's a lot of people there, and who knows if there would even be a place to camp. So uh, I'm just going to grab this one right here, and it's about um, it's like 5:30, so it's still pretty early. Uh, sun's not going to set till like seven or eight anyway. So I'm going to set up my stuff here, and uh, I may just I may just set up my stuff and cook. Then after I'm done eating, go grab some water, just do a night hike, <sighs> just so I can have water for uh, the morning. So that's the plan right now. Let me uh, let me get busy setting stuff up. I'm, I'm like starving. I can't wait to start cooking some dinner. Alrighty, well here we are. I'll set up. And I'm getting ready to cook some dinner. Um, I got my bed all set up in here. I got my pack hung, hung from the carabiner. I got this bug net here. Which is, you know, there's not that many bugs, but it also helps you know, keep out drafts and stuff. It gives me a little bit of extra warmth. And uh, my 20 degree pod, which is all ready to go. I got some clothes here to change into. And I got my toiletry kit hanging from the other carabiner. And and so I can jump in bed anytime I'm ready. And I got the I got the doors at the head end, kind of wired shut there just for some privacy because, you know, we are right on the trail here, so uh, don't necessarily want people coming by, checking me out in the morning or late at night or anytime. All right, so <clears throat> I'm eating dinner. This uh, pasta bolognese from uh, Packet Gourmet, which is pretty awesome. Um, <clears throat> You have to boil the noodles for like nine minutes. So uh, I made a little campfire to boil the noodles. <sighs> well, it's about quarter after nine. And uh, this is my attempt to try and light up my tarp here. You probably can't even see it. <sighs> um, uh, it's pretty dark out here. Uh, I can see a few stars. I hear a lot of trains going by. <sighs> so apparently there was a uh, um, a campground just past the ATC, which I almost went down that way. I remember I pointed it out that it was the Blue Trail. Apparently that goes to a campground. And uh, from what I hear, it's very close to these trains that are constantly going by all night. And uh, it's just a big open field and uh, you can't really get any sleep because the trains keep waking you up. And I can still hear them even from here. So, I don't know. Is it worth the climb way up here? <sighs> it doesn't matter because here, here's where I am. <laughs> well, anyway. All right, let's go to bed and watch some TV. And so day two begins. from the hammock. Awesome. So day two begins. The sun's actually coming up over there, but it's shining on the mountains over there. Um, so pretty much camp is broken down. 
I got some stuff there that I'm not really ready to put away yet and I'm gonna cook some breakfast because I know I'm gonna be hungry once I get on the trail and I got a little half portion of mountain house chili mac and beef and my one cup of water that I'm boiling here Mm hmm yum yum all right let's eat breakfast of champions finally leaving camp had breakfast everything is packed up everything is on my back and we're out of here I'm leaving a little later than I thought because I met this guy and his dog and we were hanging out talking for a while so but that's okay and one last look at the campsite and back on the trail And I'm kind of chilly right now because I just have a t-shirt on and it's about 40 degrees. So I just got to get hiking to warm up. Over there, that's where we're going. So yeah, not cold now. You know, 40 degrees in a t-shirt really no big deal when you're climbing up a mountain <laughs> you warm up instantly Um, I guess it's that way. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see what the the morning view looks like from the top of this thing. Well, here we are, back at the top of Center Point Knob, is what it's called. And uh, it's, it's a pretty cool view. Well, I practically ran down the mountain. I thought it would be a good way to get some, get a quick mile under my belt this morning. And now we're at the bottom and we're about to be back in farmland. Yes, we're out of the woods. Oh man, look at that view. Oh man, this is pretty nice. Just walking through a grassy field. Nice sunny day. It's about 50 degrees right now. Ah, and the, just the smell of, of grass is everywhere. <laughs> it smells like summer. It's pretty awesome. It's 
also is that big open area out there the Appalachian Trail campground that someone was telling me about you could see the railroad tracks right behind it that lady was trying to tell me the lady that I talked to was trying to tell me that I could have stayed there I'm like you know what my plan was better it's better that I didn't go there <laughs> I made it back to the Appalachian Trail Conservancy and what am I in about three or four miles so far 3.83 miles and there needs to be a burger joint somewhere nearby right here Seriously, go for a burger right now at nine in the morning. <laughs> well, I found a buddy. I don't know where this dog lives or who his parents are, but I saw him up the trail a little bit and I've been talking to him and he's been kind of hanging with me for a little bit. I'm hoping that a person will show up eventually and claim him. If not, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I'm a long way from anywhere. I don't know if this dog is going to want to hike 16 miles with me back to my car so I can take him to somebody who can find his home. Hopefully that's worst case scenario. I don't know what's gonna happen with this guy he's really far out how did he get out this far that's what I don't know I mean maybe does he live on this farm over here right maybe he comes out here all the time and this is no big deal for him so he uh, the doggy eventually kind of fell behind and uh, I guess that's a good thing. Oh, there he is. Is he trying to catch up to me? Yeah, I'm not really sure if he's uh, lost or this is just his kind of neighborhood that he plays in and he, he lives at one of these houses nearby. I think I feel better that he didn't try to follow me. I was mostly worried that he would try to follow me all the way back to my car. And I would I would wear him out. Back to the war zone. Should I be, should I be ducking here? That's got to be a shooting range. Yesterday I thought that was just somebody, you know, some hobbyist shooting a gun on his property. <clears throat> That's just way too much gunfire to be just somebody on the, on his weekend hobby of target shooting. A lot of gunfire going on over there. <laughs> Here we are, the nice little water crossing. It's about 10:30 in the morning, and I've gone about seven miles. And uh, I say it's time for brunch. I'm going to sit down, take a little break, have another cup of coffee. And there's a nice log to sit on. 
Man. Alrighty. Well, we got our got our coffee going here. And um, I'm having some trail mix. And uh, this is the roast beef. It's a packet gourmet deli roast beef wrap. So after I'm done my coffee, I'm just going to put this in my pot with some water. And then I'm just going to walk with it for about a couple of miles. And then uh, eventually I'm going to eat that for lunch. But all in all, this is a great place for uh, a little lunch break. The birds are chirping. The guns are popping. <laughs> what more could you ask for? Here we have this little uh, swampy area that I passed yesterday. I think it's pretty cool looking. A lot of interesting colors going on there. As you can see, I'm still carrying my um, what is it? Uh, roast beef. My deli wrap roast beef. Uh, except I'm not going to eat it as a wrap. I'm just going to eat it out of the cup. So I think I'm going to sit here. Same place I did yesterday. And uh, first of all, let's see what this looks like. I don't really need the cozy. I'm just carrying it in the cozy because I can't put the cozy back in my pack by itself because it'll get crushed. And it's not bad. I probably added too much water, but that's okay. If, if I was doing this as a wrap, this might be too much water. But, uh, yeah. I tried a little bit of it, and it's pretty tasty. And the cool thing is, you don't need to cook. So, pretty awesome for lunch. Really nice section of trail right here. No rocks, pretty much, and uh, just beautiful. It's a cow party. <laughs> Those cows don't care what time it is. They don't care what day of the week it is. Man, I could go for a glass of milk right now. So I'm wearing my, wearing my, uh, it's kind of a sweatshirt, but not really. It's, it's very breathable. And it's like 70 degrees, maybe a little more. Uh, but I'm just, I'm wearing this because uh, I can feel like my, I feel like my arms are getting sunburned a little bit, so. And I don't have any sunscreen. Yep, I remembered to bring bug spray, which I have not used at all this trip. But I did not think to bring sunscreen. What does this look like? So yeah, the sun is so bright out here. I'm just trying to protect my face from sunburn. I can kind of see through my buff a little bit, enough to see where I'm walking, as long as the terrain is not too... Uh, technical. Well, it is very hot. I think it's in the 80s right now. I can't even really tell because my watch is saying it's like 85. It doesn't seem like it should be that hot, but... So that water that I got at the uh, little stream where I had my coffee this morning, uh, and I filtered it and everything, but, man, it just didn't taste right. 
Uh, it had a funny taste to it, so I don't know. I mean, I'm out there in the middle of, like, farmland, so I don't know if it's safe to drink that or not. But anyway, I didn't want to drink it. So, basically, I've been hiking all this way with no water. Uh, I didn't dump it out just in case I get really desperate. But I'm probably not going to drink it. And I'm just now starting to get back into the mountains and I'm seeing streams and everything. I cannot wait to get some fresh, good tasting water. Uh. All right, last major climb of the day. There'll be one more smaller climb after this. But this is the big ass kicker at the end of the day, pretty much. And that's what we have to look forward to. Up this way. sure how much you can tell about how steep it is but it's really it's okay it's not really super steep everything feels ridiculously steep at the end of a day but honestly it's not that bad and it's like a spiral staircase close to the top. Here's kind of a, a false summit if I remember. It's kind of a view. But we're not quite at the top yet. Still, still a ways to go yet. Well, I finished the last two climbs and I'm heading back into farmland and it feels pretty good to be back. Next stop is back to the car. down to the home stretch now it's literally all downhill from here there's the parking lot ah so I made it all right so And right now, I'm only thinking about one thing. <laughs> 